Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. It is good to be with you again today, and I hope that everything is going well with you and your family. In our lifetimes, we have all given many gifts, and I'm sure we've all received many gifts. Some of those gifts you really cherished, and I'm sure some of those gifts you did not care too much about. But over the years, there have been some amazing gifts given to their loved ones. You might remember the story of King Nebuchadnezzar back in the ancient days. He created the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. He presented those gardens to his bride, who was lonely for her former home. So he built a whole garden just for his wife. Napoleon is once have been said to have given Josephine a terrera set with 880 diamonds. Now, can you imagine how much that would be worth in today's money? 880 diamonds. Well, I'm sure your guilt does not compare with either one of those. But what is your greatest gift? Your greatest gift, of course, is God's Son, Jesus Christ. That is the greatest gift that we've ever received or will ever receive, And as a result of that gift, we can have another gift, which is the gift of eternal life. In Romans 6 and verse 23, the Apostle Paul says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Notice Paul said the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life, then, is a gift. A gift doesn't cost anything. So we have here a free cause for a free gift. But yet, on the other hand, while in one sense it is free, it is also a very high cost. Now, how can a free gift cost a lot? That's kind of a paradox. A paradox is a statement that is seemingly contradictory and yet is true. And that is a paradoxical statement. A free gift costs a lot. How can we understand that? Well, it's really very simple, I think. You know, many professing Christians have a wrong concept of what salvation is. They have a a wrong concept of how to attain heaven. For example, many people would think that their, their reward is going to be gained because they have lived a good life. You've often heard people say, I cannot believe that this person is going to be saved or be lost, rather, because he is such a good person. I've heard it said on several occasions. Well, that is salvation by works. Because he lives such a good life, he is going to be saved. That's salvation by works. Other people might think they're going to be saved because they have been very generous in giving their money. They've given a lot of their money to charities and other things. Other people might think they're going to be saved because they're very faithful in their attendance at church. And while those things might be good, those things in themselves is not going to guarantee us eternal life. You see, salvation is God's gift to undeserving men. Paul wrote in Romans 5 and verse 8, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us while we were sinners. Christ died for his enemies. Those who were living in rebellion against him, those are the very ones that Christ died for. Salvation then is offered freely, But that doesn't mean it costs nothing at all. Indeed, this gift costs a lot. There is nothing in all the universe that has cost so much as this free gift of salvation to mankind. What did it cost God to provide this gift? Well, we see in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, 
talking about God, he says, He did who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You see, it caused God the sacrifice of his only begotten son. He did not spare his son in an effort to save us from our sins. We cannot even imagine what it must have hurt God as he looked upon Christ on the earth, as he went about suffering and finally dying on the cross. And yet God willingly gave him up. But then, of course, it cost the son a lot. It cost Jesus Christ the son a lot. In Philippians chapter 2, verse beginning in verse 6, Paul wrote, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. So here was Jesus on an equality with God. And yet, beginning in verse 7, But he made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Here was Jesus being on equality with God and yet he willingly gave it all up and became a servant. He became a man and finally died on the cross. You see, it cost Jesus Christ the renunciation of the glory and majesty which he had with the Father before he came to this world. It cost him the humiliation of servitude, even to the point of suffering and finally dying in crucifixion for our sins. You see, the high cost of providing this gift was certainly high, wasn't it? But you know, it also cost us a lot. Now here again, many people would say, no, it doesn't cost us anything. How can it cost us anything at all? Because it is a free gift. If we have to do anything at all, then it certainly cannot be a free gift. But notice what Paul says in Philippians 3, verses 7 and 8. But what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish or garbage that I may gain Christ. Paul said he gave up everything for Christ. And he was willing to do that because he knew what Christ offered was more than adequate to pay, repay what he gave up. You see, one cannot accept Christ and his salvation on lesser terms than the complete surrender of ourselves to God. That's what makes the gospel of Christ a hard gospel for many to accept. Indeed, that is the high cost of our salvation. It means we must surrender our lives to Jesus, and that is difficult to do. Many people want to accept Jesus as Savior but they do not want to accept him as Lord of their lives. But you cannot accept Jesus as Savior without also accepting him as Lord. You cannot have one without the other. You see, if we want to be saved and we have to recognize Jesus is Lord of our life, we must completely surrender our life to Jesus. Jesus himself said in Luke 14, verse 33, <clears throat> So likewise, whoever you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now notice what Jesus says. Jesus said, whoever, it doesn't matter who you are, <clears throat> whoever does not forsake <clears throat> all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. You must completely surrender yourself. So how can we say then that salvation cost us nothing? Jesus said it cost us something. Jesus said you have to give up everything. You have to be willing to forsake all that you have before you can really be Christ's disciple. The Great Commission requires us to preach repentance and remission of sins. For instance, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 47, 
He said repentance and remission of sin should be preached among all nations. You see, there is no remission of sins without repentance. And repentance involves the whole life. You see, repentance is the abandoning of our own selfish ways to go God's way in obedience and fellowship with him. Repentance then means surrendering yourself in obedience to God. It means having Jesus as Lord of your life. And yet in spite of what those words we've read, so many people still make the claim, just simply accept Christ and be saved. Just accept Christ as a Savior of your heart. Let him come into your heart and you will be saved. Many people assume it's simply a matter of just accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior with no strings attached, so to speak. Oh, we should change our lives, and most will, but really that has nothing to do with salvation. You're saved once, and then over time you'll gradually change your life. And yet that's not what we find. That's not what we find in Scripture. Jesus said, surrender all that you have. Jesus said in John 14 in verse 21, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Here Jesus said, if you want to love me, then it means you will keep my commandments. That's obedience. That is surrendering yourself to Christ. And until you're willing to do that, you do not really love Christ. And if you don't love Christ, then of course, Christ is not going to love you either. That's why the gift of salvation, while offered freely, still comes at a very high cost. Because you see, our salvation cannot be earned. It cannot be merited by any amount of good deeds. You see, even after a lifetime of diligent service, we're still nothing but unworthy servants. But it does mean that we must be willing to surrender our life to Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus rightly demands a full surrender to his authority. That's why the gift of salvation is very costly. It has cost a lot. It costs God a lot, it costs Jesus a lot, and it also costs us. And we must never forget what it does cost us, and that is the complete surrender of ourselves. Yes, the gift of salvation is costly. It costs God more than heaven can declare. It costs Jesus the agony and the shame of the cross. And it costs everyone who truly receives it the total submission of ourselves to the rightful claims of Jesus on the lives and souls of all who would be his for a time and eternity. It means we must completely surrender ourselves to him. Is it worth it? Well, Paul said it was. For instance, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2 in verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Paul said that we cannot even imagine the good things that God has prepared for us. Is the gift of salvation going to be worth surrendering ourselves to Jesus? Paul said it certainly would. He was willing to give up everything and even more than what he did in order to accept Christ. What about you today? Are you willing to give your lives up in obedience to Christ? Are you willing to really let Christ be Lord of your life? Be Lord means his authority. Is Christ going to be your authority in life? Unless we're willing to do that, we have no hope of being saved. Yes, salvation costs something. It costs us surrendering ourselves to Jesus. Until we're willing to do that, we have no hope of salvation. If you have not done that, I hope you will do that. I hope that you'll call a number on the screen and let someone help you in your obedience to Christ. They'll be able to answer every question you might have and hope you'll give your life to Jesus. 
so that all of us can be in heaven together for all eternity. Thank you. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth. And you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15. Our study Madurai 625016 Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214421. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you.